from around the globe. It's The Cube with digital coverage of Next Level Network Experience event. Brought to you by Infoblox. Hello and welcome back to our coverage, The Cube. I'm John Furrier, your host. We're here with a virtual event with Infoblox on Next Level Networking. It's a virtual event hosted with theCUBE. We have a great guest, Kuneya Vasuni, who is the EVP of products and corporate development with Infoblox. Uh, Kuneya, thank you for coming on, appreciate it. My pleasure, John. Um, you guys are, the theme of this is next level networking, which I love, next level. It, it really kind of illustrates, we are going to the next level with COVID-19, we're seeing it everywhere. Security, uh, DNS topic that most people aren't familiar with, but in IT, you know all about it. You guys are leading and reinventing DDI for the folks that want to know what that is. It's DNS, DHCP, and IP address management uh, for the hybrid cloud and borderless enterprise, which is basically everything now. Um, this is super, super important as we see every single company living this right now, which is workforces working from home, workplaces that are <laughs> transforming, the surface area is huge, you still got to connect to the internet, you still need to go to websites, you need to still do e-commerce, you need to run your business. This is a huge, huge problem that's been highlighted. Secure yeah. access there, you guys are in the forefront for the next generation networking. Tell us what you define as next level. So, um, John, I think some of, one of the things you will see is if you, if you look at the trends happening in our business, right? There is, there is an increasing adoption of SaaS services, whether it's infrastructure as a service being consumed from AWS, Azure, uh, Azure or Google, or uh, all the IT applications moving into SaaS. So you, you're already seeing a shift away from this data center being the center of the universe in the, in the enterprise IT infrastructure to more of a cloud edge world, where a lot of the applications now sit in the cloud. Some in your private cloud still, but a lot in the public cloud. And, and then you have your enterprise edge from where you want to get to these applications directly instead of backhauling all the traffic into your uh, traditional uh, sort of data center. We are also seeing a big push into the number of devices coming into the infrastructure, whether it's BYOD, IoT, 5G, so more devices coming into the infrastructure. As you said, that perimeter and the surface area of the enterprise has exploded. So you have to, tell, you have to start to think about security from a different standpoint. Uh, so all these trends are, are starting to play out in, in the market. I think what you're going to see is over the next couple of years, the, the, the the, the network inside the enterprise is going to look very different from what it is today. Today, everything gets backhauled to the data center and that's where all the action is. I think what you're going to see is a big shift towards what we call a hybrid multi-cloud enterprise where you may have some workload sitting in your data center, some workload sitting in public clouds, some in your private cloud, and then you want the ability to move these workloads around. <clears throat> You're virtualizing everything, all your applications. You are actually containerizing all your applications and you want all this stuff to, to, to move around. So um, it, it poses a very, very interesting challenge. And that's why we say you need a next level network experience to deal with all the changes that you, uh, that enterprises are going through right now. That's a great point. This is our top story that we've been reporting for, for a long time, but most recently with COVID-19 this notion of multiple networks, multiple environments, multiple clouds, certainly hybrid cloud has been ratified. Everyone pretty much acknowledges that cloud operations on premises to the cloud are there, but you got to still move packets from A to B, move them around and now you're storing them and all kinds of things are happening. But I want to get your thoughts on a trend that even makes what you just said even more complex because the complexity is crazy right now. There's a trend of managed services as cloud explosion comes on. You mentioned SaaS. More companies are deploying managed services, sometimes multi-tenants, sometimes pure instances in the cloud or on-premises and data center. That's causing access. So I still want to integrate that into a web presence. So you know, I got to integrate all these things. It's not that easy. Now again, DNS has been a big part of the web presence, but now you have a new dimension of, of hosted applications. You have managed services that, that are easy to stand up but now I got to integrate them. This is one of the hardest challenges that we're hearing. I want to get your thoughts and reaction to that. Yeah, and I think uh, <clears throat> COVID has certainly accelerated the, the shift that we talked about. So I think good point there in terms of just COVID acting as a, as a big accelerant in, in terms of the shift to the cloud. Um, I think one of the 
the the key role that we play as the enterprise gets much more dynamic is is you need three elements you you need the element to be a, to to get visibility into everything that's going on in your in your infrastructure you need to provide a layer of security a foundational layer of security in your infrastructure and you need automation because when you have workloads moving around you need to automate all your itsm workflows around allocating ip addresses to these vms or containers uh, and moving as containers move around reclaiming ip addresses assigning new ip addresses managing dns records for them so the the work we do the the ddi layer really becomes the lifeblood of how this hybrid multi cloud enterprise uh, comes along and, and as you get to a much more distributed it infrastructure you are not going to be able to manage this entire infrastructure yourself the traditional way right so if you are an enterprise it administrator you cannot sit there and say look i'm going to do the traditional model of deploying software on premise or appliances on premise and i will have it guys going out there and and managing the administration of that software and every 6 months i have to do a software upgrade and i'll do all that what you need because the enterprise has become so distributed and dynamic is you need a a, a cloud managed paradigm or a managed services paradigm in either case basically what you see what you're looking at is a centralized management model and the ability to sort of spin up and tear down these services dynamically uh, we are strong believers in saas or a cloud managed approach and a cloud native architecture uh, being the right architecture for the next level network uh, and that is something from a delivery standpoint an msp can use a managed services provider can leverage this cloud managed architecture that we have to offer these services to enterprise customers and take away the whole headache of uh, managing and administering their own uh, own infrastructure i like how you said ddi layer because there's an abstraction you can create that take away that complexity that was pretty straightforward in the past you had dns dhcp ip ip addresses okay you manage those spaces right. no problem naming what not now you have a dynamic environment that's key um, i want to get back to and follow up what you said about the it folks your customers and the enterprise they're sitting there saying hey i'm used to the on premises world and i have cloud what's the difference in your mind between on premises and cloud managed ddi and why does it matter yeah, look i think in the traditional world all the it infrastructure right again was was sitting in one or more regional or or regional or centralized data centers and, and that, that it was easy to manage you could you could deploy appliances from infoblox and um, and it was easy to sort of um, you had it folks sitting in these data centers and and they could manage the the, the entire infrastructure uh, using some on premise management tools and and things of that nature But now think about it. If you are if you are a Walmart and you have twelve thousand five hundred store, right now if you want to push DNS, DHCP, IP address uh, management software into all these twelve thousand five hundred locations, it is very difficult to do that uh, by deploying individual appliances or by deploying uh, sort of uh, <laughs> shrink wrap software that has to sit in every every one of these locations. it's just from an it administration standpoint it's a, it's a much heavier lift but if i could take all the management and all the policy management uh, the, the policy framework and, and pull that up into a saas cloud that you can access from anywhere on the on the planet right and, and i'll leave the protocol serving engines if you will on premise so you have a container that gets spun up that can sit on any third party hardware that's sitting at your infrastructure but it is all managed through the cloud it's zero touch provision uh and and completely orchestrated now you are sitting at us at a central dashboard and if you are in a covid environment you're sitting at home and just accessing our saas service and managing your entire infrastructure from uh from from your from your home from your couch at, at your home right so it just becomes so much easier for IT administrators to 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 operate and 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 run such a network. They'll have so much free time on their hands. They'll be able to watch this virtual event. So it'll be fun. They're sitting they there. They might do they that. Yes. Dash dashboard. No, that's, <laughs> that's a great right. point. I want to get your thoughts because I like how you um first of all I love the term next level anything. Going to the next level has been a, something that you talk about whether you're you're a technical person or an entrepreneur or a business person. Let's go to the next level. It means go to the next level. But you add the word experience in there and I want to get your thoughts on that because it is about the user experience. 
What do you guys do to provide that? What does InfoBlox provide specifically to provide that next level experience? Yeah, no, that's a great question. Uh, we are firm believers, again, that the future of networking and security in, in IT is going to shift to a cloud managed, cloud native paradigm, right? Which means you should be able to, just like the hyperscalers, the AWS's, the Google's, and the Azure's of the world, right? If you look at how they build out their cloud infrastructure, it's all about separating the infrastructure layer, so the compute layer from the applications that sit on top of them. So the compute nodes can scale at a different, uh, at a different pace from the, from the applications. That same mindset needs to come into, into managing networking and security services as well. So uh, if you have a thousand different edge locations, let's say, right, you can decide through a centralized policy framework what services you want to spin up at all, all these thousand locations. Now today, you would have to buy a box a small, medium, large box from InfoBlox or any one of the networking guys out there, right? And you would have to deploy that. And most likely you will end up over provisioning each site because you don't want to run out of capacity. The next level experience would say, look, just tell me what sites you want to deploy. The sites will call home. They will download the number of services needed based on some centralized policy that was defined. And you would get a right size deployment of services at that particular site. You need more services because say the user profile, the, the, the profile of the users at that site change, which means you need to spin up, let's say a couple of additional security services. Well, that gets automatically pulled from the cloud and gets instantiated in that particular site. If you need more capacity because it's end of the quarter and you're doing a whole bunch of pay, uh, some financial transactions for closing the books, you need more capacity for some of the security applications. Those additional containers with those security applications can, can uh, get spun up. So you are starting to scale out as you need and scale back when you don't need the capacity. But this whole thing becomes a very dynamic experience in terms of how services get spun up, they get torn down. And it's all driven by this, this whole notion of the users that are sitting at a location the context of the user, so what devices they are trying to access these applications from, what, uh, what, what is the time of the day, uh, how is the security profile of that device. You bring all that know-how into the, 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 how services get provisioned and how services get uh, operationalized at any particular site in any particular uh, enterprise, right? So very simple experience when it comes to networking and security and how do you deploy it at scale. And the, and the thing that that sets up is what you were saying earlier about automation. Because once you're in this mode and this experience, the environment lends itself well to automation because it is downloading the right services you need. But since it's dynamic and it needs to be ready, how does automation fit into that piece? Absolutely, right? If it is SaaS managed, it is already automated for you. And now if you wanted to drive further automation and orchestration through integration with your DevOps, SecOps, NetOps tools, we have public APIs uh, through which you, this, this can be driven. So two ways to, to manage this, right? We have a cloud services portal. So if somebody wanted to go in and leverage our portal to manage their infrastructure, they can do that. If they wanted this to be completely programmatic and driven through their, their DevOps, SecOps tools, uh, then through the public APIs, we will tightly integrate into all the, the tools they have. Whether it's Ansible, Terraform, some of the DevOps tools, or on the security side, if you wanted to integrate us into your SOAR platform, security orchestration platforms, you can do that. And, and your entire workflow for networking as well as security can be completely, uh, completely automated. That's awesome. I want to get, as we get a limited time left, I know you got it to go and we have to hard stop at the segment here. Customer example, obviously customers have a need for this. You're in business to do this. Can you give an example of a customer that kind of illustrates the next level networking? Yeah, we have, we have 6,000 plus active customers. Uh, we have uh, over 50% share when it comes to this DNS, DHCP, IPAM uh, market. So. You will see us deployed in, and we are deployed in 95 out of the Fortune 100 enterprises, right? So Infoblox is some, someone you will see in any customer that you, that you go through. We have some public references uh, such as Adobe, uh, a great customer of ours on our website. 
right? They, their entire uh, global uh, network runs on uh, the foundational layer of DDI. We have some very large customers that are not as comfortable <laughs> being public references. Uh, but we have, uh, again, if you have 95 out of the Fortune 100 enterprises running you, uh, you can imagine how sticky we are and how broadly deployed we are. Typically, what happens is we would go in and we, we would go in as the DDI layer for them to control and manage their IP address space and their DNS in the, in the infrastructure. Uh, then they take on more of a, they take on a security lens at this and say, look, through DHCP and IPAM, I know everything that is sitting in my infrastructure. And through DNS, I have full visibility into all the communication happening from that endpoint. So that's a great data source for me to leverage to as a first layer of defense from a security standpoint. So then they start to bring in security into the, in, into the mix in terms of how they, they, they leverage our product. And then through our SaaS platforms and SaaS offerings, they take that and extend it as they are driving this edge transformation. So they push these services now to the edge of the infrastructure. So, and that the, the new infra, the, the, the new offerings, uh, our Blocks One platform is our SaaS platform and, and Blocks One based applications are our new offerings uh, that, that integrates very nicely with some of our traditional offerings. So you get a very comprehensive single pane of glass in terms of how you can manage your entire enterprise footprint, whether it's, it's on-prem, at the edge, in the public cloud, at the cloud edge, right? Uh, so you know, that's the way they use you know, having a good business model that puts abstractions and reduces complexities is a great one. We've seen the innovation with DNS and anything that needs an internet address, you got to connect. Then IoT only creates more need for connection. Absolutely. This is the key. Enterprises know DNS, they know what they're familiar with it. It's the plumbing, we all know. But every time there's an innovation inflection point, a new abstraction layer emerges for simplicity, ease of use. DNS is the phone book of the enterprise of, of the internet, right? So uh, you want to call anywhere, you have to first do a DNS lookup and, and you brought up IoT, that's a great example. You're not going to be able to put in these IoT sensors, you're not going to be able to put endpoint security software, but they are going to call home. So you can leverage DNS and do some behavioral analysis of the DNS traffic uh, coming out of those IoT sensors or IoT endpoints and say, hey, look, is there something malicious going on? Why is my thermostat talking to a server in China? Well, yeah. You can detect that through a DNS-based security layer that is foundational uh, in your and, infrastructure. And to your point, whether it's a light bulb or anything on, that's a device, they're being turned on and turned off all the time at massive scale. There's no other that's way right. to handle it but have an abstraction and automation. Absolutely. Kunea, thank yeah, you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much for your time. Great segment. Uh, we're here at the InfoBlox virtual event. This is theCUBE coverage. I'm John Furrier. Thanks for watching. Thank you, John. Thank you all.